Stephanie. Today I'm sharing a tutorial on how to make this charcuterie board. My sister's wedding is coming up and I really wanted to make something special for her and my future brother-in-law. They love wine and cheese and I thought a handmade charcuterie board would be the perfect gift idea. If you're not sure what a charcuterie board is, it's basically a spread of cheeses and meats and fancy finger foods on a nice serving board or platter. You can really customize this any way you want to. There are a few key things that make a really good charcuterie board and I'll explain those later in the video. Let's jump right into the tutorial. Here are some of the tools that I used for this project. If you're working with hardwoods, you may want to invest in a belt sander. This Ryobi belt sander was only $65. I'll leave a link for these tools in the description. I also used an orbital hand sander for more of the fine sanding. I used these clamps to clamp my board down while sanding and cutting. You gotta have your measuring tape and protective equipment. I found this marble rail molding from Home Depot and I was going to try and do a cool marble inlay. It didn't quite work out and you'll see why later in the video. This is catalush wood imported from Mexico. I bought this at a local architectural salvage shop. It's a super hard wood, perfect for charcuterie boards. Then I have this Gorilla Glue. This is what I was going to use to attach my marble to the wood. Here is some cutting board oil to apply to the charcuterie board after it's finished. This is a wood burning tool. I think it was only $16 from Home Depot and I'm going to use this to burn some lettering into the board. And last but not least, my hydration tool. Before we get started, I wanted to quick thank the sponsor of today's video, Liquid IV. Liquid IV is a healthy electrolyte drink mix, perfect for staying hydrated. Liquid IV created hydration multiplier plus immune support to maintain and strengthen your immune system. Proper hydration can boost your immune system and your body needs fluids and electrolytes to function at its best. Drinking one Liquid IV can provide two to three times more hydration than water alone. I work outside a lot in this crazy Florida heat, so it's easy for me to get dehydrated and I've always struggled with drinking water, so it really helps when I add some sort of flavoring. I have been drinking Liquid IV for over a year now, and not only does it taste great, it's a great way to stay hydrated and healthy. I like to start my day with this lemon ginger flavor. You may have seen Liquid IV before, but this is their new hydration multiplier plus immune support in the tangerine flavor. Each packet is bursting with fresh natural tangerine flavor. It tastes so good. If you want to try this new hydration multiplier plus immune support, Liquid IV is offering a free three pack sample sent right to your doorstep. Check out the link in the description. You can find Liquid IV at Costco. That's where I usually get my drink mix. Or you can shop directly off their website and you can use my code STEPHANIE25 for 25% off. Thanks again Liquid IV for sponsoring this video. One of the key things that makes a good charcuterie board is the type of wood you use. You want to use a non-porous hardwood like teak, American cherry, hard maple, walnut, or oak. These are some super durable and sustainable options. I found this catalush wood, which was imported from Mexico. It's incredibly durable, has a beautiful finish, but it is a little tough to work with because it's so dense and heavy. I recommend checking out some architectural salvage shops. If you're in Jacksonville, Eco Relics is one of my go-to places, or go check out a local lumber yard to find the perfect board for your project. I started by cutting the wood down to size on my miter saw. Remember what got you here and keep at it On the sky is the limit Cause you paid your dues and waited your turn Sanding is a crucial step. You want to start with a super rough grit sandpaper and move to a fine grit sandpaper, making sure to change out your sandpaper often. I started with a 36 grit on my belt sander to get out all the cut marks. After using 36, 50, and 80 grit on my belt sander, I moved to 120 and 220 on my orbital sander.
said, son, you'll remember this day for the rest of your life. I think he's right. Now we're notching out each end for the marble pieces. I set the blade to the height of the marble piece and took off the safety guard in order to cut the board all the way through. Be careful if you do this, it's not the safest practice. After those cuts were made, I made a mark where my marble pieces would sit on each end and then used my circle saw to cut the depth of the marble piece. Okay, so plan A was to use these marble accent pieces to inlay into each end of the charcuterie board, but I'm not loving how it looks. Um, this board is a little warped, so my cuts down here aren't perfect, they're not straight, and there's a pretty big gap in between my wood and my marble piece, so I don't really trust using like a wood filler or something since it's a board that you're eating off of. But I just wanted to show you guys what this looked like. I'll still leave the step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this if that's something that you're interested in. Um, if you do have like a planer, that would be a good thing to put your board through first so it's nice and straight and your cuts turn out a lot straighter than mine. Um, but this is kind of what it would look like. Obviously, I would cut down the marble pieces so that it was um, the same width as the whole board. But that's kind of what it would look like. I was also planning on using super glue to glue the marble to the wood, and I'm not sure how that would have turned out. I've seen people do that before on um, Pinterest and other tutorials, but I am just a little skeptical about that idea. So I think I'm going to move to plan B, which is scrapping the marble, which I'm really pumped about because I was really excited about that. But I think I'm going to cut the ends off so I can just start with a blank board. I sketched a few different designs on the charcuterie board and I think I'm going to stick to more of like a traditional style. I drew on a little chunky handle. I'm not sure if you can see the pencil marks, but I drew on a chunky handle and then I'm going to take my jigsaw and cut out the handle. And then I'll take my sander and just touch up the edges so that they aren't so sharp. Last, I still plan to use my wood graving tool to draw out some cool lettering or um, numbers for like their wedding date. So I still plan to do that. I think plan B is still going to look awesome. But like I said, I'll leave the directions on how to do the marble inlay if that's something that you're interested in. And hopefully you have better tools than I do to make the project a little easier. So that's the plan. I'm using my miter saw again to cut off both ends of the board. Now I'm using my jigsaw to cut out the handle for the charcuterie board. I will link this jigsaw in the description below. After the handle was cut out, I sanded down all the edges and corners of my board to give it more of an organic shape. I think he's right. Mom said now you've got something new to write about tonight. I think she's right. I paid my dues and waited my turn. I finished the sanding with some 400 grit sandpaper. Now that the board is shaped how I want it, I'm going to use my wood burning tool to burn a G into the lower right hand corner for my sister's new last name. I practiced on a few scrap pieces first. On the sky, is near me. Cause you paid your dues and waited your turn. And the rest of your life starts today. But 
I found a font that I liked online and copied that onto my board with a pencil, then carved out the G with my wood burning tool. I took some 400 grit sandpaper to smooth it all off and then finished it up with some cutting board oil. This is a food grade mineral oil enriched with vitamin E. You should oil your charcuterie board regularly, especially if it gets a lot of use. If you're not sure how to artfully arrange food on your charcuterie board, check out some inspiration pictures online. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks again to Liquid IV for sponsoring this video. I hope this tutorial helps to create your own beautiful charcuterie boards. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and go see what I'm up to over on Instagram at home with Stephanie.